Hey, Vector. What's the weather today? 55 degrees and cloudy. All right, so I'm in the greenhouse and it is May 17th. It's Friday. Um, oh, I am going to get on it. I am still full of energy, but hubby took me out to breakfast, so now I've had four cups of coffee. So being that I was as hyper as I was this morning after just a few hours of sleep, now I have caffeine and I am ready to go. So I fired up the one pump and there's a little bit of bleach, it's probably about 10% bleach solution in the water and I'm going to let that cycle through the pumps. That's going to kill any bacteria or anything that's in there. Um, and then I will cycle the other pump. The only problem is, i turn you around here real slow, during the winter time I lost a timer. That timer is working, that timer is not. So I'm going to have to get another timer no biggie I think that timer well these actually both of these timers are they're five years old now and that's pretty impressive for being out here in the Sun direct Sun just beating on them all the time so I lost a timer so I'll be going to Home Depot and picking up another timer um, everything's clean that's uh, the easiest way to clean is because I have plastic on all these benches so I just hose it off it's nice and cool in here now I turn the fans off uh, just to so it's quiet so I can listen to the pumps that way I can check and right now it's the back pump that's uh, going and that runs this line back here because I have to run two pumps because otherwise I don't have enough uh, reservoir to uh, feed all the plants there's two lines right here it's this line right here that line runs all the way around to the back now that's a long way that's 20 feet so there's a few things that are tucked to this line, but most of it starts um, it starts right here. So it just runs it runs this back uh, line, and then the other pump is huge, and that one runs the rest. The actually that one runs one, two, three, four benches, and um, that back line just runs that back line all the way around. So I will let this run for about 20 minutes and that should clean all the lines and then I'm gonna have to um, turn it off let it drain and then run the other one without the timer for 20 minutes and I'm gonna go out and uh, wash hose these buckets out and take a look at them and, and see if the the fill line which runs there these two buckets are connected by a little quarter inch line that runs all the way down to the base of it so they stay evenly filled at all times so I fill both of them up, 55 gallons worth of hydroponic formula, and then they drain at the same time. There's another line that comes out, goes all the way down, goes into this little container, and there's a little toilet type float that when the water goes down, it goes down with it and it lets it drift in. So that's one of the reasons why I don't run both pumps at the same time, because it drains the the pumps drain 
the um, reservoir and then this drips and then when the pumps turn off it overfills and comes back so they run uh, separate that way this never overfills and I don't end up wasting my hydroponic solution into the ground growing nothing it's nice to hear this hey Vector what's the weather today It's Saturday, Whew. and it's warm in the greenhouse. With the fans on, it's uh, 32 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it's about 90 degrees in here already. So the sun finally broke through the clouds, and it kind of uh, gave us a nice day today. So John is home. He, uh, he actually had the weekend off. He's going to finish part of the project. And once that part of the project is done, then the rest of it's all mine. So uh, that's what he's going to do today. I am going to do this. The agenda today will be the buckets. That'll be in a little while. But first thing is first. Since the, the uh, sun came out, in about an hour I'm going to be able to mow this grass. But what I want to do is I want to get these blueberries cleaned. They have not had a good clean. I need to take out um, the flowers that are sitting here and get them in some um, water. But uh, the green aconite under my vine needs to be taken out. This is another um, blackberry. I'm going to trim this up. This is going to get planted in another place. And so all this is going to get cleaned. So that's what I'm going to do real quick. What time is it? It is 10.40. I figured this should take me an hour. Woohoo! 11.50. Little over an hour because I cleaned up the grapes right there. There was a lot of that uh, green aconite there. So I peeled all the bindweed. There's bindweed on the inside of my greenhouse, but I have to get it from the inside. Um, it's behind those boards, so it's up underneath all the um, wood chips in my greenhouse. And that bindweed, it was eradicated, oh, probably seven, eight years ago, and it has come back with a vengeance. I hadn't had it in the in the yard for years, and now it's just everywhere. So I don't think it's ever going to be gone because it can travel from one neighbor that doesn't keep it pulled, and it weakens it, and it can just travel in just one little piece you're pulling vine weed so it's pretty much the same as the green aconite that somehow managed to get in my yard and I think it's from probably soil that I had brought in um, because those little blue flowers all these little blue flowers with I don't know if you can see them let me get them real close those little blue flowers fall off and little pieces it's just like it's just like the um, vine weed so the only way you can keep ahead of that is you just keep pulling them when they're little because those seeds can last for years and years in your soil and you'll turn your soil over and then you bring all the seeds up. So what's going to happen here, I am not going to dig this over. I got everything pulled as much as I could and I cut everything back. I'm not going to even tick, give it a tickle over. I don't want to disturb the soil anymore. Um, Last year I pulled the weed block up so I could do this and I just didn't get out here this uh, early spring because it was we had such a weird February. Usually I'm out in the yard in February. So what's going to happen now is I have cardboard and I'm going to take all my pots that have, and I'm emptying them right there, have any kind of extra soil in them. Um, I'm going to take my pots, I'm going to break the soil up over the top. I'm going to give these guys a good um, feed with um, some compost and then I'm going to put the cardboard over the top of them and then I'm going to put uh, chippings over the top of that so <clears throat> they'll get a good feed and then chippings and then what will happen is it'll it'll bury that uh, the weeds and they'll be fine the blind bind weed will still come up bind weeds gonna come up no matter what and same with the um, the green aconite that'll push right through cardboard it'll push through weed block it push throughs everything so as long as you keep pulling the plant um, it'll eventually weaken it and it'll die. Now the thing is, is I usually leave it in my yard not quite this long, but we were such, we had such a cold spring 
that it's bloomed late. Usually I pull it in April. Um, but it's just finally flowering and doing well now, and I'm just starting to see the honeybees out. So I have one section over on the other side of the yard that I am going to leave it probably for another week. It's really late because I really liked it out in April. Um, but since the bees are so late this year, uh, it'll give them something else to eat while the rest of the flowers are in bloom. Now, most of my flowers are blooming now, so the bees have a lot to eat. But they do like this green aconite. So I'm going to go get a cup of tea before I come out and put the cardboard down. And uh, I'll be back. And we'll see what this looks like. Um, today's Sunday and I just potted up my um, micro toms and they're getting their little flowers on so I have two of these and I'm gonna put these back out in the greenhouse so that they will survive out in the greenhouse this summer I am going to uh, what time is it it's one o'clock and we just went and picked up some more um, supplies for the project. So John is going to work on that um, while I put my hydro in because uh, he can do that by himself. He doesn't need any help. So I'm going to build my hydro buckets um, and actually rebuild my hydro buckets and I need to put new gaskets in. Everything else is ready to go and I am going to get my perlite started. I don't know if I'm going to film it. I might go ahead and um, film it after I rebuild my buckets because I've already done videos on the bucket rebuild and so I will put that as a card at the end um, of building my buckets last year just in case somebody hasn't seen how I do that. Um, other than that, it's the same build. Wow, what a beautiful day it turned out. The um, It was really cloudy this morning. It was kind of cool and it is actually, as the day has progressed, um, it's now 5.30 in, uh, in the evening and the sun's out and we don't have hardly any clouds in the sky we have the light wispy ones so it actually is nice and warm so I'm gonna turn you around um, one really good thing that saved me a lot of time this year was these gaskets um, I was getting gaskets at a different manufacturer they weren't actually made for hydroponics but they did fit the the hole to, to hold the half-inch pipes in Last year I actually went to a hydroponic website on Amazon and picked them up. They were a little bit more expensive, but none of them collapsed. So I had no leakage last year compared to the years before, and I didn't have to replace the O-rings. So that was a savings in itself. So if I get another year out of these, I'm already ahead, and it made them, as the, uh, the, see, it made them about the same price as if I would have to replace them every year. So less waste get two years, don't have to dismantle the buckets. All I had to do was rinse the buckets out, give them a quick scrub, and they were good to go. I did put in um, new paint, if you can see them, paint strainers, the little paint strainers, and that actually keeps the perlite from going down the tube and getting into my system. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the perlite and give it a quick rinse and then start filling my buckets up, and I should have my first, I should have my tomatoes in tonight. Um, they probably will not be online tonight because I didn't get to the store to get the new um, drain in but I can fill up my 27 gallon bucket and I can run my pumps through that uh, I just won't leave them on at night plus the tomatoes are really small so they're not going to be drinking a lot once this system gets up and running the tomatoes get really tall like I usually have them um, I'll go through 55 gallons of um, formula in about probably about two and a half days and they just drink that much so especially when it gets hot in here okay the trick with perlite it's dusty and you don't want to breathe in this dust so what I have learned is keep it in the bag and I just put it on um, my clicker on shower and I just wet it down and what this does is this gets the dust knocked down into the perlite and I will do this just really wet it down and at the end when it gets down to the bottom you'll have a really uh, gritty dusty slimy mess that you have to throw away but this just keeps you from breathing in the 
the perlite dust. And usually I do this outside, but since I have a sink now in the, in the greenhouse, I can do one tomato plant at a time. So I'm just going to take my bucket, set it over the sink like this, and then fill the bucket up with perlite. And this is the extra large perlite. So it's really big, really airy. And once I get down to the part where the perlite's dry again, I will uh, throw more water in it. But this way, you're just oops, you're just not dusty at all, and it just makes it makes doing this a lot easier. Plus, with the big chunks of perlite, um, you're not fighting the dust like you usually are either. Now, you still have to fill up your bucket and you still have to run this until it knocks all the dust out because you don't want your dust going through your um, your pumps so it takes a few seconds for the the bucket to fill you can see so the bucket has to fill up now it's it's draining water and you just do this until it runs pretty clear And my drain isn't going out into the uh, into the sewer. My drain's actually watering a hedge, my neighbor's hedge. So the hedge will get nice and nice and big. So now the water is clear, and now I can take and put my tomato in. It's just a steak, and it works out really good because it's about the same size as the tomato. So. I want to make sure my drain is in the middle, and then I'm going to put one tomato here. And I'm not even going to uh, take the dirt out, because the roots have wrapped themselves into the dirt. Now, I've done it both ways. I have rinsed the dirt off and just stuck them in here, and I've also just put them in with the dirt. The dirt doesn't get in the perlite. It just doesn't wash it out. The roots will eventually grow, but it doesn't it doesn't seem to affect anything. It doesn't spoil my water and my nutrients. It just doesn't do anything. I did this the last few years and instead of rinsing all of it off, it it just doesn't do anything. So, I'm not worried about it because for the last few years, it's been just fine. Nothing has nothing has gotten dirty or anything. Top this off a little bit. I can see the name until I can get a bigger stick in here and push down on the perlite so it's set and then what I do is one last time I get all the perlite wet and let it run And then I want to tip it so that I get all the liquid out because I don't want to dilute my hydroponic formula. So I just really what I'm doing is I'm just rinsing the perlite. And this one's done. Well, it's 9 o'clock at night. And I got my buckets in. Yay! So tomorrow morning I'll come out and I'll explain what all the buckets are. Those last three buckets, those are uh, for cucumbers. I'm going to grow some cucumbers in here. And my peppers 
are going to go into the very back. And I have tomatoes left, so I need to find somebody to adopt my tomatoes. But everything else is ready to go. And then, finally. Yay! Okay, over and out for tonight. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching and subscribing, and there's a lot of good guesses on what uh, my project is. Uh, like I said, um, John is fish finishing up his end of the, the project and then I will be finishing up the rest of the major uh, rest of putting it all together. So that hopefully if the weather holds and it is just cloudy and we're not pouring down rain, I'm hoping to get all that done within about a week and a half um, to move on to the decorating stage. There's another hint. So thanks for watching again guys and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.